terms of um, libertarianism and promoting sort of Ayn Rand and these sort of freer ideas we have, on an intellectual hit level here, I think everyone can listen to this and go, ah, oh, this is a great speech, you know, we can understand what you're saying. My main interest, though, is, is, is getting those people who have less of an interest in politics to under, understand our ideas. And one of the key ideas I think we have a problem with is there is a model, as I think you mentioned it, that what we have today, this idea that we still have capitalism, when really it's just this sort of state-backed corporatism. I'd like to know your thoughts on how we unmuddle that and present a simple argument to, to people who have maybe a lesser interest in politics. Well, let me first address a danger that I think exists, and in, in, even in the terms you use, state that corporatism, I think, is a, is, a, is a dangerous term, and I think one that I would avoid, although I know most libertarians use it uh, quite extensively. Um, because saying that corporatism would suggest that the real villains here are the corporations. Now, I'm not saying that the corporations are good guys, but I don't think they're the villains. They do things I don't like, but everybody out there is doing stuff they don't like, and they have huge influence, sure. But I don't think they're the villains. Um, so I think there are two issues here. One, who is the villain? And I think that needs to be explained. Um, and second, um, how do we describe the system that exists today? Now let me start with the second one because it's easier. I think what we have today is, it's a simple concept. What we have today is a mixed economy. We have a mixture. Yes, there are elements of capitalism. Yes, you can go to the mall and you're free to choose what you can buy. Nobody's forcing you to buy a particular product versus the Soviet Union where you were told this is what you buy and you only have one choice and that's it. So there are elements of freedom out there. There's no question about that. We can't deny that. But they're only elements. Because, for example, you're free to choose, but the choices are limited by subsidies and regulations and controls and everything else that's going on where the government is, 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 has its fingers in your life and in the life of the manufacturers of the products that you're purchasing. So we need to describe the system as what it really is. It's a mixture of freedom and coercion, a mixture of capitalism and socialism. With the elements of socialism, at least in the United States, in the UK is a little bit, you know, you've gone through more cycles. But in the US, systematically, the element of socialism increasing, systematically, for the last 100 years. And then you need to link that to their economic, you know, the economic consequences of that, which are quite brutal these days. And, and you can easily show that the economic consequences are not the result of the freedom elements within society, but a result of the government regulations. It's not that hard to do if you have, you know, if you have somebody's attention. Um, and personal freedoms, how they're going away. And you have to appeal to people's, you know, fundamental love of freedom because I think most people do want to be free. Most people do want to make their own choices about their own lives. It's, you know, you have to convince them that it's okay to let other people make choices about their own lives. Everybody's, everybody's happy with the choices they're making. It's other people they don't trust and they want, and they want to go after. Um, so I think, I think you have to explain the system as it is. So, you know, banks in the United States are, you know, I like to say 80% government, 20% capitalism and free. And banks are the ones that collapse, right? High tech is 80% free, 20% government, and it's doing pretty well. Not an accident. Okay? And you can, you can show that. Um, so yes, I agree with you. We have to communicate better the notion that capitalism is not what we have today. Capitalism is not what failed. Capitalism, indeed, has not really even been tried. It, you know, We dabbled in it a little bit in the 19th century. But we didn't really do it all the way right even in the 19th century. And it's interesting, even in the 19th century, the areas we government dabbled in are the areas that did really, really badly, like railroads, you know, they, they didn't survive in the United States uh, very well into the 20th century because of government, uh, government intervention, banking, and, and other areas like that, land, land use. Um, so you can show, you can correlate government intervention with people's standard of living, with, with the quality of people's lives, and with their freedom. Now, why not only is it helpful to go after corporations 
although it's it's populist and it, it has a big appeal and it's it, it seems to it plays well. Um, fundamentally, business small and large. The fundamental activity is um, is a huge value add to each one of our lives. It is a huge contributor to our ability to live well. Um, and the left hates them. The left hates them for being businesses. They don't hate them because they're big. They, don't, they hate them for making money. They hate them for the profit motive. They hate them for their, their very existence. They hate the idea of a corporation. They hate the idea of a business. And we need to be very careful, and, and to some extent the right does too, particularly if they make too much money. We need to be very careful not to play into that. And, you know, I, I see, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Ron Paul in the US, but Ron Paul does this a lot. He, he lamb blasts Wall Street, he goes after them, and he plays right into the hand of the leftists who, who say, you know, it's all paper shuffling, they don't do anything. But that's BS, that's just not true. They do something incredibly productive. And they do something incredibly productive in spite of all the regulations. And yes, when government is going to round up and regulate their industry, as they're going to do right now, they're going to spend gazillions of dollars to make sure that they get as much benefits as they can from it and to help with everybody else. But the problem is not them. The problem is government. The problem is that government has the power to regulate them to begin with. The problem is that government has the ability to choose winners and losers. If the government is going to choose winners and losers, and you're a big company, who are you going to, who are you going to try to, what, part, what pile are you going to try to be in? You're going to try to be in the pile of the winners. I mean, you'd be stupid not to. I'll give you a, an easy example. Microsoft used to spend zero dollars on lobbying in Washington. Zero. None. They just, you know, that was Washington. None of their business. They did their thing. They created all this wealth all these opportunities with no lobbying of government at all. And then the Justice Department went after them for antitrust. And they got hammered. They got hammered here in, in, in the US and then the Europeans went after them and they just, guess what? Microsoft today spends tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars lobbying in Washington. And when a bill comes up that affects high tech and that bill is gonna choose between winners and losers, is Microsoft gonna spend a fortune to try to make sure that they're in the winner's pile? Absolutely. And if you're CEO of Microsoft and you don't do that, you're violating the fiduciary duty towards your shareholders. So the problem is not Microsoft. Or Citibank, or, 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 or Goldman Sachs, you know, right? The problem is that politicians have the power to pick winners and losers. The problem is that politicians introduce bills that are gonna hurt some and benefit others. The problem is the morality that allows you know, all of this to exist. It's a, it's a, this is an intellectual philosophical debate. This isn't about the, I mean, let's, let's get away from what I described earlier, this pressure group versus that pressure group. No, what ideas are driving the very existence of these pressure groups? That's what needs to be attacked. And I, I think when we play big business as bad business is, is play into the hands of the wrong people. And yes, you know, we get some populist appeal, but I think it's short-lived and it, 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 it's not last. Business, by its very nature, is good. Yes, they are bad businessmen who pervert it and use Washington to gain advantage, and we need to attack them, and, 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 but don't attack business qua business or big business qua big business. Attack mm -hmm. Jeff Emelt because he goes to Washington to beg for handouts. Attack, uh, you know, it wasn't even GM that asked for a bailout. They were bailed out whether they wanted to or not, right? I mean, government forced it down their throats. Uh, you know, attack Citibank for, for getting another bailout. But don't attack big business, core big business. Attack the particulars, the particular instances where they are going after. Attack the particular businessmen who are the Leslie Moochers or who are the Oren Boyles, if you read out the shrug. The, the, the particulars, but not as a group, because I think we do we do them and we do ourselves a disservice and the cause of disservice.